Morning, Mark. Morning, Kevin. Thanks very much for joining us on Blue Notes on the morning of the full year result. Um, we're in Melbourne, so you, you're sitting one and a half metres apart. You've had your masks on. So maybe it, it's good to start with the Chief Risk Officer. Kevin, in these extraordinary circumstances, how are you thinking about the risk settings at the bank? Morning, Andrew. And look, at each crisis that we enter into is, is different, right? So if I think back to some of the ones I've worked through, whether that's GFC, Asian crisis, whether it's, you know, this one, whether it's the early 90s too as well. You know, the, the way that the crisis unfolds, who it impacts and how we respond to that and how we're positioned is different for each of those. If I look at this one, we're in a very different position. We're a much stronger, simpler bank than we were a number of years ago, so better positioned. In addition, one of the things we did straight away was we tried to identify those customers, those industries that we think could be more susceptible to this type of crisis. And initially what we ended up doing was we undertook a series of industry deep dives, stress tests, we, you know, we reviewed over 20 industries. We also then looked at the, uh, the risk rating of our customers. So we ended up, as of today, you know, we've reviewed over 93% of the customers within our institutional business, over 80% of those within our commercial business. When we look at the result then in terms of the provisions provisions for actual bad debts, individual provisions, they're reasonably stable. It's the collective provision that's been raised quite a lot for what might happen in the future. To date, there hasn't actually been COVID-related losses, but they will come. So how are you forecasting that? Yes, Andrew, look, you're right. While shareholders will have seen a $2 billion increase in our credit impairment charge, we haven't actually lost money as yet directly as a result of COVID. So as you point out, there's two provisions. One is the individual provision, which is those losses for customers that you've incurred a loss on or you have impaired them. That's with the exception of one large number that we alluded to at the half year, that's broadly the same as last year. It's the collective provision charge that has increased. And what happened was there was a new accounting standard that came into effect for us, it came into effect for all banks, but for us, it was from the 1st of October, 2018. What that requires us to do is to look at what we think the expected future credit loss might be. And we use economic models to help us derive that outcome. And in addition, we also apply a management overlay to them. What shareholders will have seen is that it was that collective provision that increased by $1.7 billion uh, this year. And essentially the way I think about it is that's us setting aside money for a rainy day, right? So we haven't incurred the loss today. We may at some stage in the future. It's also possible we may not but we set it aside. And for us, it meant that we have $5 billion in reserve for that, for that rainy day as such. What we did in the second half is we took some extra provisions. At the first half, we looked at it and said, you know, grim economic outlook, 13% unemployment, 13% GDP contraction at a peak. We then said, you know what? It's probably not gonna be as broad based as that. We then looked and applied some additional management overlays to complement the economic models. And I think as a result of that, we've come up with a very prudent and considered approach to our provision levels for this year. Thanks, Kevin. So, Mark, you run the Australian Bank. So in, in the context of what Kevin's been talking about, how are you seeing it from the, the customer perspective? You know, what are the key insights there? And you know, obviously, customers are still anxious. Yeah, absolutely. Customers are anxious. And one thing we've got to remember is Australia has been exceptionally lucky economically. We have had many, many years of economic growth. And so it's been a long time since our customers and indeed our staff in the bank have seen anything that looks like a recession. So I think it's important at times like this to remind our customers that they need to ask questions. They, they need to go back to their trusted advisors, whether that be their banker or their accountant or their lawyer, or people that they know that have run businesses similar to them, perhaps been through tougher times and have conversations with them and make sure that they understand what the future could look like. We've got to remember a couple of things that are in our advantage at the moment. Interest rates are at all time lows. So in terms of running a business, um, and keeping debt going, if you like, to, to make sure that you sustain your business at the moment. Debt is as cheap as it's ever going to be. It's hard to imagine it'll be cheaper than it is at the moment. So I want to remind our customers that it is a good time to take a breath, have conversations with people that have been through this scenario, talk to your banker, and really think about how you want to manage for the next six or so months because we're seeing some really positive signs out of states like WA and Queensland in particular 
who have had that period of stability, they've had a lower impact of recent months in terms of COVID as compared to Victoria, and we're seeing some really positive signs in terms of how customers are recovering. And Kevin's spoken of the actual bad debts, but a lot of there's been a lot of deferrals of loans, and the, the statements to the stock exchange have provided a lot of detail on that. But can you give us a sort of understanding of how deferrals on loans are playing out? And also this idea of ghosting, where you've tried to contact people on deferrals and can't get to them. Yeah. Well, firstly, on the ghosting, we haven't had a, a big issue with ghosting. So certainly customers that you call don't answer the phone the first time you call. They've got a lot of the other things on in their lives than to, to talk to their banks, particularly when we're calling in advance of the expiry of their facility. But what we are finding is you, you email customers, you write to them, you call them, some proactively call us. But for us, it's only about 3% of customers uh, that we're trying to get in contact with that we still haven't had that conversation. We're confident those conversations will take place because this is a really important issue for customers to make sure that they've got their financials sorted out. So I don't think ghosting has been a, an issue for us and, and, and won't be going forward. In terms of the, the deferrals, the conversations we've had with customers uh, have been about their situation as it stands today and the outlook for their situation. And so remember, we only gave original deferrals to customers who are in good shape, customers who were running profitable businesses, customers that were paying their mortgages and credit cards and the like. So it is the circumstances that has created this hardship for them. And so there is every reason to believe that when these circumstances move on, they will recover in some shape or form. So our conversations with these customers have been very much about impact aside, what does the outlook look like? If you're, if you're a mortgage owner, what are your employment prospects beyond, beyond this period? If you're a business owner, is Christmas trading and the fact that we open um, borders, for instance, in Australia, is that gonna make a difference to your business? So it's very much a conversation about, put this current circumstances aside, what do we think it will look like for you on the other side? And by and large, it's a fairly positive story. Well, thanks both for giving us those, those insights into, into what's the numbers that have gone out today. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks.